Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to another episode of This Week in Caribbean Tech, which you know is a weekly podcast that helps you to stay ahead of the top tech and business news in the Caribbean and globally. And we kind of give you some more insights behind the news as to why it actually matters to you and your business. And so here I am again, um, Ingrid Riley, uh, founder of CEO, founder and CEO of Silicon Carib. And with me, of course, is the Trini living in a 305, but you're somewhere, God knows where you are, Daniel Smith of Keeping Living. Where the hell are you, Daniel? <laughs> hey, I am in the Midwest. I'm in Missouri today. Um, yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm thankful that summer is here, okay? Um, Why? I <laughs> Why? <laughs> it, is, it is hot as balls here in Kingston, Jamaica, like really. Hot as balls, let me tell you. Well, the, the reason is, is because I can thankfully say that school is over. Ah, yes, and you have a daughter, yes. So the school year is finally over. And for me, that means I can, I don't have to get up in the morning at six o'clock or 5.30 to get anybody ready and, and stuff like that to, to make sure that you get to school on time. I'm like, thank, I'm like, I can sleep. <laughs> Until somewhere. this is this is the this is the tone of like all the parents out there saying thank you god the summer is here and uh but yeah but didn't y'all did weren't y'all you got you guys got a lot of breaks you know you let me let me just you know push the envelope here you guys got a lot of breaks during the early parts of the panini right during the pandemic not y'all weren't uh, going nowhere no but <laughs> i think that most people did, did i think that for me um my daughter's school was back in 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 full swing. I think wow. she got August off. She 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 was working from home. School started at the end of August, so it started end of August. By October, she was back in school. Oh, um, so my daughter, unlike everybody else, and and all these schools where they they're online and hybrid and whatever, like everybody, I think that there were like in her class there was like two people who decided not to come and even by the end of October so she went back like the beginning of October because um what we realized is that um in-person learning is so much more structured than uh being at home and so she was back you know very early I mean and their, their school had a rigorous process so you know every two weeks the students were, were getting COVID tests and they were doing a you know, rapid test kind of thing so they were fairly I mean there were people who got sick but so I I did not enjoy so since 2020 since 2020 yeah she's oh. been back. okay I, I can I get it then I get it then all right well you're like thank you Jesus I get a break <laughs> Jesus <laughs> thank you Jesus it's like one of those things it's like yeah. oh you, you, you never you never praise Jesus as much as when you see summer vacation rich because it's like I can let my hair down. Oh my goodness! <laughs> anyway, and, and speaking about letting letting their hair down, let's go into the first um, the top news of the week. And let me tell you guys right now, this podcast, this show this week is going to be very fintech and crypto heavy. I did say this couple like couple um you know episodes ago that fintech, crypto, e commerce, anything that de that deals with the the um at the intersection of technology and health and wellness are going to dominate um, the headlines generally, um, especially worldwide, but yes, in the Caribbean as well, because especially FinTech and crypto. So let me get you started. Talking about they're feeling themselves um, is Jamaica. Jamaica becomes the first country to make a CBDC legal tender. And of course, a CBDC is a central bank digital currency. So the central bank has officially recognized the currency called Jamdex, which some people call Acumony because <laughs> the, the logo looks like a digitized version of Aki, which is of course Jamaica's national dish. So Jamdex, the name of the digital currency um, is now legal tender in Jamaica. So it becomes the first country to do so. So it's, um, it says there that they, want, they wanted to kind of move um, to provide an alternative to what is um, a heavily cash-based economy, which is Jamaica. So according to them, the digital do Jamaican dollar offers a more secure 
convenient alternative to physical notes and coins and can be used without a bank account. Because um, I don't know if you guys know, but I think we'll refer to it in another podcast that Jamaica's on bank and on the bank is anywhere between 30 and 50%. So they're trying to get those people in um, into you know the digital way of doing business and um, and so here we are with Jamdex um, you know Jamaica becomes the first um, country to do this CBDC thing. So this is after of course they were um, throughout the big carrot of saying hey if you sign up to do this sign up to um, you know get your digital wallet and and we'll send you two thousand five hundred Jamaican dollars. Um, to sweeten the pot, to give you, you know, to have a look around and get it um, as well. So, yeah, what do you think? We're the first country to legal to make CBDC a legal tender. You know, US hasn't even done it yet. Um, what are your thoughts about that? So, number one, I think that you are giving away free money. Uh, free money is really good. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I'm just gonna say, yeah, twenty five hundred dollars Jamaican is around. Um, Divide that by 150. Tell me what you get in US dollars. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so, so you, possibly, you possibly can buy, you know, with inflation and everything, maybe two patties, a coca bread, and a soda, which is actually the all, Jamaica's all alternative um, national, real national dish, patty and coca bread. But anyway, I digress. Go ahead, sir. Your thoughts on this move by Jamaica making their CBDC legal tender? Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. I was looking at Bloomberg uh, sometime over the last week. And I remember your Minister of Finance being on Bloomberg and he was talking about um, just the way how Jamaica has gone about the whole regulation of uh, FinTech. And uh, I think he did allude to this uh, on some level. Mm -hmm. So what he did say was while they want to be progressive they want to keep certain things in check mm -hmm. and i think that you know this um the, the the move to create their own legalized cbdc is an uh, it, it goes to strikes at the heart of that uh requirement of the the, the central bank uh, bank of makers it's called uh the central bank of jamaica to really keep uh things in check in terms of understanding how this plays out mm -hmm. uh, i think that so so for me i think it's a pretty progressive move uh when i compare it to what what happened in trinidad on the week in, in the last week where i think the founder of wep was talking to the um to the a joint select committee of parliament and talking about why WP moved out to Trinidad, I, I, I do see a lot of similarities in terms of, but on the other hand, Jamaica opened up to WP and have allowed them to be able to, you know, provide that kind of service. So I, I do think that for the region, it, it is one of those progressive moves. I think that, again, you would need to get more answers out of them as to what are their real objectives in doing this. I, I, for me, I don't think it's it's pretty it's you know poignantly clear. I I, I get you know being the first, um, and I do understand in terms of why they want to onboard people. So you know they they're using the sweetener, the two thousand five to be able to do that. But and all in terms of if I'm looking at it from an innovation standpoint, I'm like yeah kudos um i'd love to see what the results show you and what the test because for me you know building out and being in pilot testing fees also for my product you know one of the questions you really have is what are your objectives coming out of this i don't think that that has been fully you know made clear yeah that's true um you know and of course there's going to be a lot of mixed um feelings about this they, you know, people who are in blockchain or in crypto are like, they're, they're like, eh, okay, you know, do people understand that when you're using, you know, you know, government's legal tender CBDC and um, it's, it's being ran through the largest, um, you know, bank right now, National Commercial Bank, which is um, owned by billionaire Michael Lee Chin. And then there are other banks like JMMB, um, which are owned by the Duncan family. Um, they're, they're considering actually using it as well. But a lot of people are like, eh, do you know, people know that how, how, how open 
um, and how easily accessible government has to all their transactions and all that they do using the CBDC. Do they know that? Um, but, secondly, but, you know, but and, and also crypto people, some, some crypto people are like, okay, cool. Have, have them play around with the CBDC, this digital currency. They get, they get used to um, doing things digitally, you know, to buy things and act digitally. I keep saying that for me, the first real digital bank and digital currency here in Jamaica and the region was Digicel. Anybody who has ever had to buy airtime or what we say credit in Jamaica using your, your, your debit or credit card or somebody send it to you, um, and you're being able to move that around from phone to phone, send it to your friend, your friend send it to you. People have been using airtime um, or right. you know the credit to buy and sell things for years. So for me, that has been the first digital currency um, that's been around. But um, but some people are saying, hey, fine, let's get the unbank and the underbank a little bit more comfortable with using digital currency because this is a, can be a great, um, you know, like the you know as a sort of a, a appetizer for crypto because right now um, fifth, over fifty thousand Jamaicans actually are in the crypto world actually own crypto already. So it's going to be interesting as to see how, um, as you said, what's the outcome of all of this. There, I mean, they would definitely tell you that the the main thing is that they want to get the unbanked and the underbanked. Um, into the fold, into the into the financial system, because they know we all know the benefits of financial inclusion, and that is really really important. So, but yeah, they're still in pilot phase. It's not um, the CBDC Jamdex is not a legal um, tender. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out as okay. Fine, this pilot period has revealed A, B, C, D, and then I think I'll probably make another um, assessment of it all. But but. but just to the heart of what you're speaking of is that at the end of the day or, or what you said, you know, uh, people in the crypto space looking at it. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the minister just basically, I, it, it was an event in Panama talking about Latin America and the FinTech world. And he basically said it, he's like, we need to understand what's going on. So to me, that points at the heart of regulation or regulating this, they do not want, he, he was plain. They do not want anything that resembles the wild, wild west in terms of fin fintech and not being able to understand it. So their objective really, I, I think by, you know, doing this and and, and this, it, it didn't start yesterday or it didn't start last week and they decided to put it out. So their ultimate objective has been to make sure that whatever happens that they have, you know, control over it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so it speaks to that. So again, uh, the people who understand crypto, who want decentralized regulation, who don't want to be trying. Yeah. Again, and I think that the region, and, and I was listening to Malad de Karan the other day talking about why, how come Europe basically blacklists the Caribbean? And that's a whole different topic that I it's, don't think- It's, it's a very colonialist, racist strategy. If you, trust me, Marla Dukaran, um, chief economist at BIT and Trinidadian yeah. lives, living in Barbados. Probably. She's mm -hmm. one of the smartest people I know. She's also one of the most fearless people I know. If you want to understand the, how still very racist and colonialist and um, classist the or global financial system is, you just want to you want to follow Marla Dukaran on Twitter and and read everything that she writes at her website. Fantastic. But go, go ahead. Yeah, and and so I think that she was talking to somebody in Barbados last week. You know, just kind of out like. the reason that we are so protectionist is to ensure that we don't get blacklisted or if it's just mm -hmm. about really ensuring that you know they're able to handle it but i do understand you know especially because even with the biden administration and the rules that they've put in around crypto i think everybody wants to understand you know exactly how things are happening nobody wants to to, to, but but again, some of this the beast is already out in some cases, so I yes. don't know that you can really pull it back now. But I think that there is this valiant attempt. So in, in Jamaica and the Caribbean, I and and from even a central bank, I know in Trinidad standpoint, you know, you know, part of what they've said is that they're trying to protect the consumers. So it, there's a lot of there's a lot of of consumer protection in our region. Um, yeah. And they they're ensuring that hey, nothing goes wrong under my watch, and so you can understand it.
Yeah, generally, but you know, and then move on to the <laughs> the second <laughs> or second item of news where where a, a, a government decides they're going to do the exact opposite. They're like, you know what? We know that we're living in this global digital economy. We we are we love the blockchain technology and the fruits that are popping up from that, you know, digital asset economy, crypto, currency, decentralized finance. So Bar um, Bermuda set out is now, has basically got their first digital bank. And so they, the government there has green lit um, Jewel Bank as a first digital bank. And that bank um, got their full banking license under, the, under what um, Bermuda calls the Digital Asset Business Act. And so they're focused, they said it very clearly that we're focused on the digital asset economy. And the government of, of Bermuda says, listen, as a nation, we want to have a FinTech strategy. And for us, having that FinTech strategy means that we're gonna be diversifying the country's um, economy. And they see this move as part of their Digital Transformation Act. So of course the bank, Drill Bank says, yeah, they're gonna be hiring up to hundred um, people in the first year. So we have Jamaica who has gone the CBD legal, legal tender route, but then we have Bermuda have just said yes to their first digital bank. And of course the digital bank is, is a bank where you basically have no physical branches and you can basically, in a sense, download an app or go to a website um, and sign up and conduct um, business from anywhere in the world. It's something that is it actually been gain, gaining, gaining steam in the US market as well. So as we did say, right, that the three Bs that are actually pushing, um, you know, tech development across the region is Bahamas, Barbados, and Bermuda. So here we have Bermuda, their first digital bank. So this week seems to be an announcement of a, of a bunch of um, firsts um, out of the Caribbean in the fintech space. Yeah, and, and, and so that, that is a really progressive move. Again, you know, yeah. we'll have to see how it, it evolves. Yeah. But I... What I'm realizing more and more in, you know, just the tech space and how things are evolved. Once, uh, I don't think that governments have the luxury of sitting behind the eight ball and trying to allow tech to run away with them anymore. Mm. Um, and so I think that from, from what you're seeing, I think it's, you know, them trying to, to get into the game um, not over-regulate. So, you know, they could they could have shut this down and say, hey, we're going to regulate this. But the thing about it is that if you want to make an impression on, on the minds of your citizens that these things are important, because post-COVID, everything has happened and, and we're all digital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to make certain strategic moves as a, as a yeah. country to be able to position yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these smaller islands have a lot of stuff in the banking world. And so their objective is to really continue and to, to make sure that they are promoting for their citizens Absolutely. and also for, you know, companies coming in. So I think it's it's critically important um, that they do this. I know that they would have, you know, test and see what, what the results look like mm -hmm. or what the uptake is like. So again, you know, I, I think on the opposite end of the CBDC, which is really government regulated, I know you have this bank, you know, that is, is you know, Bermuda is opening exactly. up the door, Absolutely. gives, you know, gives you which parallel works. And and so the winner of this, so, you know, we, we check back in a few, in, in, in a year or two or a few months and see, you know, what is the uptake been? What and be and asking the hard questions around these things, I think, are, is critically important to understand which model works best. Because for those who are lagging behind, then it gives them some kind of opportunity to understand. Okay, these are the two ways I can go, and these are the possible results I can see. But if you really want to open up to the international market, then Bahamas may have chosen the better strategy. But um, Bermuda, Bermuda, Bermuda has, absolutely, and Bahamas too in terms of what they're doing. And yeah. we're on to we're on to um you know another B. <laughs> and which is Barbados. Barbados, um, you know, says that they are perfectly poised to be the Silicon Valley of the Caribbean. And in my copy here, I was like, insert eye roll here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we know, Daniel, that if we had a dollar for every, or, you know, a Bitcoin for every, <laughs> for every, um, you know, Caribbean prime minister or politician that has said that over the last, just even just over the last year or two, that yes, you know, Jamaica is positioned to be the Silicon Valley of the Caribbean, Grenada is positioned, Bar Bahamas, I mean, the list goes on. And all I just want to say is like, 
Wanna stop it, please. Um, wanna stop it. The, the for me, if you understand the history of Silicon um, Valley, um, you know, and and you know, to be fair, let me say this. I'm not sure what what example of the Silicon Valley are they um, talking about because right now Silicon Valley is right now as as we speak right now not the center of innovation in the world again. I get the fact that they're saying yes, yeah, Silicon Valley has this name um, that people refer it's historical to. Historical context. Yeah, historical context, almost like Harvard. It has a, that sort of a blue ribbon, um, you know, perception. gold star, gold star. Um, appreciation um, of it, but you know, Silicon Valley got started because of government money being pumped into a particular sector, and yes, without question, and and so that was that's what started them off. Um, I don't see any Caribbean country that is actually pumping a bunch of money into any sector. Um, so, so, uh, uh, that, that that will allow for that to happen. Jamaica is busy, busy attracting money for BPOs, but that's a whole other thing because you know how I am about BPOs. But anyway, let me read the thing because before I start ranting, Gabriela Bed, co-founder of Bit and their Bed Group, was on this podcast talking about listen, you know, Barbados is in a position to be the Silicon Valley of the Caribbean. He said that, you know, Barbados he really has the ability to be the regional region's um, tech leader. Now he is, you know, Barbados is um, ambassador to, U to, the, to UAE, United, um, um, United Emirates, United UAE. Arab Emirates. Arab Emirates, I was trying to remember that word. <laughs> and he says, um, you know, he went on to make the case for startups in the Caribbean. And, you know, and then of course went straight ahead to Go, went for the jugular of these legacy banks that are standing in the way of the progress. We agree on that. But, I, but the whole thing was that Rajas are saying that, um, and I get it, Barbados, and of course the Caribbean Prime Minister, um, you know, Caribbean Prime Minister Mia Motley, as we call her, have been, you know, she declared, we said in a couple of, um, you know, podcast episodes earlier, that she has declared that she wants to position um, Barbados as a fintech um, and crypto friendly um, nation and they're putting in, in place leg legislative framework to do two things to be very very make sure that they protect the, the consumers and their nation and their nation you know in terms of security but also provide them with opportunity and all the andas hand um, as well she really wants to, to to declare to the region and to the world that Barbados is open and open for business especially when it comes to this new digital economy but i just don't like when people go off and say oh well you know Barbados is going to be the silicon valley of the caribbean define that because that's very wide define that in terms of what startups um innovation we don't even have full data on that yet i'm trying to collect some data and everything so i just want to say to that and i put it in there because i was like rolling my eyes i was like wanna stop it Please stop declaring your Caribbean nation that is going to be the Silicon Valley of the Caribbean. If y'all do, un if you all do very specifically say what aspect of Silicon Valley and why, because it sounds empty and it sounds very salacious, but it also sounds quite meaningless. But let's stop now. Um, so I, I 100% agree. I know that we had the conversation about Grenada at yeah. some point. Uh, earlier this year, declaring themselves to be, uh, you know, a Silicon Valley option for the Caribbean. Um, and I know we have discussed this ad nauseum, so I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, we haven't done the work as a region to, to really talk about this whole Silicon Valley thing. Um, and we, we are not in attracting that kind of investments at this stage to be able to talk about you know we, we it's it's a lofty goal um because you know even i think i was and should reading, it be a lot and should it be that that should that be the goal is yeah i mean and, and, and so I mean, the goal <laughs> yeah and and so i remember reading intel's chairman um you know they were talking about you know if they had to set up again mm -hmm. they would go to possibly atlanta or texas or somewhere mm -hmm. And, and a lot of these people are realizing that, you know, Silicon Valley, it's, it's California is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, you know, whether or not you think it's a hub of innovation, there, there's the cost of doing startup and be, but what, what I would say for the, what the region has going for it is the fact that, you know, from a cost perspective, we can really manage costs mm -hmm. um, and managing those costs 
to be able to create. But then what do we want? And nobody has defined that for me as yet. Do we want to create unicorns? Well, if you want to create unicorns, you need to have this, 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 this. Do we have any of those things in our ecosystem? Um, if you want to, to be a Silicon Valley, okay, are you focused on research? Are you focused on biotech? Are you focused on climate? Where are we, uh, where are we positioning these conversations? So I think that, yeah, and for, for bits end of the conversation, you know, for me, you know, I'm also an entrepreneur. It may be self-serving in terms of, hey, we want to be the fintech capital, so therefore we yeah. want to make sure that bit is at the, the cornerstone. At least they've declared their hand in terms of how they want to position themselves, and that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, so it, it may be, you know, a bit self-serving and saying, hey, Barbados, because it does something for bit, bit uh, it may help them reach their, their unicorn status mm -hmm. that they want to, etc. But again, as a region, I don't know that beyond that what else is barbados going to do in yeah. terms of to really are we do we have enough graduates to, to put into jobs so again those and and you and i have had this conversation i think we had it like december last year but again silicon valley because of our population size it can't be ego driven i i think that a lot of what happens in our region is too ego driven it's either barbados jamaica trinidad whatever and we don't understand that collectively hey it's about our region and if our region can, and, and I know we differed on this the last time we had the conversation, but again, I go back there. If one, if, if we figure out, okay, who wants to take this? Who wants to lead on this? Who wants to lead on biotech? Who wants to lead on engineering? Who wants to lead on this? And it may not need to be that structured, but I think for us to even talk about silicon anything, we yeah. have to define who owns what lane. So if Barbados wants to own fintech and collaborate with Bahamas and collaborate, okay, this is the, the, the example we set because I know later on we're talking about uh, those guys out to the Bahamas who helping Trinidad and, and that kind of stuff. But again, you, if everybody's doing it, then we're all trying to flip the same coin and we're not going anywhere fast. And, and for me, that's, you know, the, the, the painful part of being from the region sometimes and hearing these statements is like, hey, we have all, and that's the next thing about us. We have all the people, especially on an international level who can make some of these things happen, but we haven't figured out how to utilize our diaspora to get any of those things. So trying to tell me that you want to be the Silicon Valley, I'm like, okay, mm. I, I see it. And I'm like, okay, keep it trucking because yeah, exactly. I don't understand what that means. Exactly. And, and so that's why I'm just going to end with this. And I've been seeing this, I put out my thesis about Digital Caribbean a couple of years ago. I wrote about right. it on Medium. I put it up on SiliconCaribbean.com. And it's simply this. As you said, each Caribbean nation gets to figure out what it is that they do best in the world. What is that they have a, basically an unfair advantage in? That's one. Two, they also get to decide if they can't define, if they can't find or they don't have, um, you know, nascently, that thing that they have an unfair advantage yeah. in, what can they get an unfair advantage in? How do they want to position themselves? Like, you know, Bahamas want to be crypto capital of the Caribbean. You know, um, Barbados wants to be, you know, fintech capital of the Caribbean. Each Caribbean nation must decide what it is that they have an unfair advantage in or what they want to have an unfair advantage in. And then double down and pair that with technology to really kind of give themselves and what I call a, uh, you know, basically a, a leading role, an unfair advantage in the region, and in the in the Caribbean, um, in the global digital economy. And so if Jamaica decides that they want to pair the creative industries, um, you know, music, art, whatever it is, with technology and cement that as their, their, their thing that they're going to put their stake in the ground in, um, then go ahead and do that. If Trinidad wants to, you know, do do that with NFTs, you know, with, with their, um, you know, their, their, or, or they want to become the crypto, crypto mining capital of the region because how cheap their electricity is and, 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 and their oil and natural gas is, go ahead and do that. But when everybody tries to boil the ocean simultaneously, as you say, it kind of pointless, yes? Yeah. So that's my thesis about Digital Caribbean, that each Caribbean nation must define for itself what is it going to have that unfair advantage in and pair that with technology to become the region and the global leader in that. Until we do that, we have no business declaring, oh, we won one particular thing or we're going to be at the Silicon Valley of, of, of the Caribbean. And here endeth 
the rant on this particular one. Yeah. So we, we move I, on I, to the next, I, I, I want, the next I, item. I, I need to jump in though to just 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 to, 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 to cement what you've said. Um, I again, I, I think you know really when you come back to how how ego driven we are because we all have this nationalistic pride. Yeah. It and is there really nothing wrong with that? Because I think we, we should have that. That should be a part of what it is, right? But, 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 okay. but here's what, right now, I think our national pride mm -hmm. is undervaluing the, and, and undermining the progress that we can make if we collectively figure that out. Yeah. Um, because, you know, as you just rightly said, it has to be a peer of technology and, and xyz whether it's creative or whatever but we are we are too stuck in our heads as a people and and you know for, for me i i, I kind of just came to this tongue here and i'm seeing you know so many empty buildings so the, the town fees run down and to me i'm like you know this could be the caribbean the, the caribbean could fit in in one in, in some of these cities um and you realize that here's what Sometimes it's just because we have a bit more or oh, certain things are popping off for us that we don't end up like some of these places. Mm. Um, but the thing about it is that for a long time, we, we realized that we either on the, the cusp of greatness or the cusp of falling into some kind of state of disrepair on some end. Yeah, and yeah. so people like you and me, we get vilified sometimes as being, you know, too, too aggressive on wanting certain things, but you've been in this space 20 plus years. I've been in this space like 18, 19 years. And so I think I've seen a lot of things that, that really augment and ask the question, where do we go? And what I really want to say is that I don't know that we should be allowing these people to drive these conversations. I think sometimes, maybe sometimes, like a you and I trying Absolutely. to push these things out, and and I don't mean come some me or you, but ultimately us who understand this space because we're spinning top in mud. That that's frankly why I see it. I thought you know e-commerce would have taken off so many years ago. It didn't. Um, now we we we're getting it a little way, and COVID just kind of pushed everybody into. Yes. But ultimately, I don't know what is happening. Yeah. And I'm hearing an alarm on. What is going on? Well, let's hope your building is not on fire. Well, <laughs> I'm hearing something, so I might have to jet, Ingrid. What is going on here? Let, 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 let me check. If, if you hear it again, then you were like, okay, well, maybe I gotta go and end this podcast. Well, anyway, let's let's move on to people who actually understand that in growing a global digital. He gone, yes. <laughs> he gonna check to make sure that he's not don't have to run outside of his hotel room and end this podcast or leave me alone to finish. But anyway, um, let's go on to people who understand that for their, Ingrid. yeah, you gotta go? Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Let me be saved and sorry. Okay, no problem. I'll continue the podcast solo. He me. Please be safe anyway, just kidding. Please be Thank safe. Thank you, I'll I, I, I try to join if I could. If, if this comes off, but I'm, it's going, it's going for the last three minutes. Let me go see what's going okay, on. Okay, yeah, yeah, man, go ahead and do it. Be safe, yeah? Thanks. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah, so while Daniel runs out of his hotel room because an alarm went off, and so we hope that he is really, I made light of it, but I hope that he's actually um, going to be quite safe um, and that his hotel room, hotel is not on fire. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, that's just my nervous laughter. So anyway, the next um, item on the list is this. Um, these are two people who are entrepreneurs or creatives in their own way, and they're American. And so they decide that, listen, there, there is clearly a shift going on with the global um, financial economy and that we must prepare people for it. So announcement came this week that Jay-Z, um, you know, American rapper, um, you know, musician, art, musician, artist, and billionaire, um, Jay-Z and Jack Dorsey, um, you know, he founded um, Twitter and Square. They, and of course, they're billionaire as well. Um, they have decided on, they've unveiled the Bitcoin um, Academy for Brooklyn public housing residents. They're very targeted in terms of how they have um, gone, gone after this. They say, you know what, these two entrepreneurs, Jay-Z and, you know, and, and, um, and Jack Dorsey says, you know what, we're gonna team up. I'm gonna offer a Bitcoin-focused financial literacy course 
for children, teenagers, and adults, residents of the Marcy houses, which is where Jay-Z was from. Now, it's not brilliant because Actually, um, in the United States, it is actually Black people that are actually leading in the ownership of cryptocurrency because they see and understand that this blockchain technology and this fruit, this um, financial fruit called cryptocurrency and digital assets like um, NFTs are actually a very, very good way to make money um, and to do business. And so they've gone and created this, this, um, this one-on-one course about Bitcoin to get the least, um, you know, people who are you know, at a disadvantage right now in terms of understanding um, this global financial system. What it basically is, is like financial literacy for people who really, they want to be financially um, include, included into this new paradigm that is being created by blockchain and cryptocurrency and this digital asset economy. I think it is freaking brilliant actually. And so um, we're just gonna keep going because I don't know if um, Daniel is going to join me again um, <laughs> because I really hope that he's safe and that everything is okay where he is at his hotel in um, Missouri. So we move on to, um, again, we told you it was going to be like, you know, um, FinTech and crypto heavy. So the next point um, in terms of our news is that the Responsible Financial Innovation Act proposed by U.S. Senators this past week is, is was proposed um, to look, basically be like an oversight piece of legislation for the entire American crypto and digital assets industry. What they're basically saying, you know, with all this news lately of the markets tanking, um, what happened with Luna, which in terms of people, you know, people lost 20 billion US dollars worth of value and other things has been happening, you know, people's, people's um, crypto has been stolen, you know, crypto being used for, you know, nefarious things, um, you know, black market things. They say, you know, we need some sort of an oversight and we need some sort of a legislative framework. So these two US senators, um, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and Cynthia Loomis um, decided, listen, at the height of all this is going on, ahead of the U.S. midterms, of course, we need to put this bill in front of y'all um, to say, listen, we're going to have to um, get a hold, put some legislative framework um, around it. And without question, as um, what's his name, um, that Shark Tank guy who calls himself Mr. Wonderful, he says, you know, as an investor in crypto, because he's spread across at least 12 um, different aspects of, um, or you know, called crypto startups and crypto coins. He's spread across a bunch of them. He's actually up to, he says, 20, almost 20% 20 of his net worth is in crypto. So he's a big believer. And he says for crypto to become even more mainstream and to be trusted even more, and to be understood even more that there has to be some sort of a legislative framework. And so he welcomes that. Now, how is that crafted and defined? That again is, is to be determined. So this bill um, you know, decides that it wants to put legal definitions to digital assets and virtual currencies. And it wants to say, hey, require the IRS, which is their tax collecting um, entity, to adopt some sort of a guidance in terms of acceptance of digital assets and um, around things like charitable donations and you know, trying to define what is what within the whole digital asset economy is a commodity versus a security. So it's a really interesting time um, that they're seeking to create clarity, to create understanding, to create trust, um, and that will push this crypto from, um, from the sidelines to the mainstream and for it to really become, um, as it is definitely gonna be anyway, a part of the global financial system. That's just, that's just what's gonna happen. Uh, anybody who's been tracking it for a while. So that's, that's the other item that um, I wanted to, 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 um, to talk about in this FinTech heavy and very crypto heavy podcast. And just to let you know, as we talk about crypto and, and um, crypto and, and in the United States. Currently, uh, it is estimated that there are 27 million um, or 8.3% of Americans' total population that actually currently own some sort of a cryptocurrency. So without question, as adoption moves and moves fast um, in terms of people understanding what it is, people trusting it, people actually using it and owning it, 
um, that is definitely going to go up for sure. All right, so we switch a little bit um, right now. We're heading to the section called This Week in Caribbean Startups. And we head to Trinidad. And so we're looking at um, Z Labs, which is a company that is based in uh, Port of Spain, Trinidad, headed by Mark Pereira. And they celebrated Bitcoin Pizza Day, which is this huge thing in, in within the, the cryptoverse about the guy who spent uh, a couple of years ago spent you know x amount of dollar x, spent x amount of um, bitcoin to buy a couple of pizzas i'm sure he regrets that right now um or regretted it when especially when bitcoin was at 60 something to one 60 something <laughs> six or something per bitcoin but it is celebrated to show that hey um bitcoin being used in the wild in the normal you know daily life of individuals and that's what people really want so Z labs did this um, Bitcoin um, pizza day thing. But what it really was about too, was about them testing their own mini digital currency system called WAM. If you go to, um, if you go to Z Labs on, on, um, on Twitter or at WAM underscore now, you'll see that they had this test event. What it basically is that this, you know, this Bitcoin pizza day event at their, 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 um, at their headquarters, they set up a bar and the people could actually, you know, use the digital currency on this app to buy drinks. And they were testing, it was almost, almost like, a, like a beta testing um, in a controlled, um, you know, event, you know, people that they invited and everything. And so they did that and it went very, very well. With that, they're able to gain some sort of insight in terms of what people wanted, what questions people were asking as they chose to, load up on this wham <laughs> load up on this you know um this wham app um to make purchases to buy drinks and to buy food at this test event that they had so it was basically used as a sort of a real world scenario to gain insights and so uh, it'll be interesting to hear some more as to what those insights are so we're going to invite mark Pereira um on maybe at the next podcast to talk about um, what insights they gain and tell us a little bit more about this WAM um, app that they're using and they're intro they've introduced into the Trinidadian um, ecosystem. So yeah, so that's basically about, you know, this week in um, Caribbean startups. So what I'm going to end with is, uh, oh, no, before we, before I wrap up, there's this trend that I've we sort of been seeing, which is um, mainstream um, heavy hitters, you know, who are basically in the C-suite or they're, um, they're basically leading organizations. They are leaving mainstream banking and heading into FinTech. Two such noted ones um, happened, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, just, re well, yeah, a couple of years ago, that the former deputy governor of the Bank of Jamaica um, became the chairman of WePay. And of course, WePay is that payment solution provider that was born in Trinidad, but is now headquartered in Jamaica. Interesting. So Mr. Livingston Morrison is his name, former deputy governor um, for the Bank of Jamaica, moved from being there to chairman of WePay, which is a fintech startup that was born in Trinidad. Interesting. The second and most recent one, just like this, this like a day or two ago, is Miriam McIntosh Robinson. She declared that she's leaving First Global Bank, where she was because she was president <laughs> of this bank, and she's leaving to take up a new job as managing director of a fintech firm. She has not named the firm, but we're going to find out. It's interesting too that she's also going to be a speaker at the FinTech Islands Conference, which is gonna be happening in Barbados in October, an event that Dalian and I are going to be attending um, in person and doing some interesting things um, there from with this week in Caribbean Tech Podcast. So those two things, um, those two people are very interesting. Of course, Miriam McIntosh Robinson, yeah, former president of the First Global Bank. She was also, you know, um, it's a Grace Kennedy owned commercial bank that she's president and CEO for. And before that, she used to work for Michael Lee Chin, Jamaican billionaire that owns National Commercial Bank. She used to be their deal manager um, for their Portland equity 
uh, private equity company. So it's interesting that she, again, has moved from traditional banking into the FinTech. So those movements of people from the traditional to the, um, the new is very interesting to watch. And I'm sure there's gonna be more to come. So as we wrap up, um, just wanna tell you about some events that are coming up, yeah? Um, as we just said so a while ago, we're heading to Barbados um, for FinTech Islands Conference. And we're gonna be doing a Twit, a twit uh, This Week in Caribbean Tech podcast from there, as well as doing a bunch of events with some speakers, a bunch of interviews with some speakers there. So look out for us there and more leading up to that. That is in October. Silicon Group itself, we have two trend forums coming up, one around e-commerce, one around the future of work and talent. Um, and so look out for that. And when I say look out, I mean, please go to siliconcarib.com, go and sign up for our This Week in Caribbean Tech newsletter. We send out the pod to that um, bunch of people first. And we also add a whole bunch of resources in terms of events, dates, and that kind of a thing. So you, once you're on that mailing list of the This Week in Caribbean Tech newsletter, you get everything first. And you also get a lot of things that are exclusive to the people who sign up for that free weekly newsletter. All right, so we have those events, those trend forums coming up and we're gonna be announcing the future of Caribbean Money um, Conference, um, the new dates this month. I'll let you know soon. We have just, just a couple of things to, to, um, to cement for us before we release those dates. Um, and yes, I know y'all, some of you may be cussing me, um, but we are fit finalizing our new list, which is coming from our um, trend intelligence arm. Um, and that is a top 50 Caribbean people to, um, to, to, to get to know in the FinTech crypto and blockchain space. Uh, I think Daniel has rejoined us. You all right, sir? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? <laughs> so clearly they were uh, having a test, but they didn't inform us before. So they were decided to test the alarms. And like, they had some people like walking around, but this wasn't until people were outside their room. So a few people actually ran down the steps and, and actually ran down like 18 flights of stairs. Damn. I realized, okay, something is up here. And so I, I'm walking around. And so I decided to take the elevator. Not what you're supposed to do in a fire, by the way. But... No, no, sir. You don't burn up. But, 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 but else, yeah, I realized something else was up. So I'm like, okay. Then I tried to get back into my room. The key decided not to work. <clears throat> Uh oh, you know what? It's it's it's, it's just one of the you know, and it, thankfully it's Friday. You get to um, you know, later go and relax and have a glass of wine and breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so did you finish, mom? Yeah, I've I've just done it. I was just finishing, as we say. I was just on the events. Um, okay, fantastic events. So um, so yeah. So basically, is that we're happy that you're fine. Of course. Thank you very much. The hotel should have told you that they're going to do a fire drill. So we would have been waiting for this to have happened another time. But anyway, we flowed with it. Um, we, we just wrapped up um, the event. But any, any, anything that you're looking forward to um, over the next week or two? What is going on with Keeping Lee? Ah, the next week or two. Yes. Uh, yeah, there is a demo day for... Um, Tech Beach Retreat, which we are part of the cohort. So okay. I think that that is on the- Oh, you're demoing keepingly at the Tech Beach Retreat? Yeah, yeah. On demo yeah. day. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, demo day. So that is on the 22nd, I think. Nice. Um, there's also, um, you know, we just kind of finalizing some stuff. So for us, it's just like, and I'm in New York next week talking at Black Women Talk Tech. Nice. Um, nice. So uh, I'm excited about that. Um, all the people who will be there and, you know, just talking about tech and, you know, building without a CTO for us in this first iteration, how that's gone, how it's been. Mm -hmm. um, and then just really trying to get some more sleep. Oh. I think that's, that's the hallmark of summer, okay? We can oh. rest. Oh yes, well, well, you know, this week I was, I I went I went in on that I went in on the sleep and I said it's been hot as balls here in Kingston, Jamaica, 
So I was like, you know what, Ingrid, you're just gonna have to turn on that AC to sleep that. Cause I said that they said that the best sleep that you can get is when you have um, your room is as cool, like in the sixties, like around 64, 65. It is so true. I get a solid deep eight hours of sleep. Listen to me. I'm so, I was so perky heading to the gym this morning. I was like, you're okay. I said, no, wait, I'm normally perky. What's going on? But now you're extra perky this morning because I've been sleeping eight hours all week. It's a beautiful thing. It's just a beautiful thing. And I'll be doing that on the weekend um, as well. But yeah, but for me, in terms of um, what's coming up, I will know for sure 100% my next week whether or not I'm heading to Toronto for okay. the largest tech conference called Collision. Yeah. The lineup is amazing. They, they, they have like over 20, um, we call it subtopics, areas of, of focus that they have there. They have a lot of offsite tours. Um, and so, yes, I'll know definitively um, next week whether or not I'm really going for that for sure. But yeah, just generally, I'm looking forward to a bunch of events that we have coming up. Um, we're going to have to get um, Peter Stout King on the podcast soon to talk about FinTech Islands Conference coming up. And I've also already mentioned that Silicon Caribe has its own um, e-commerce and future of work and talent trend forums popping up as well. So yeah, that, that's it. We're wrapping it up. We're, we're done, babe. We're done. We're done, 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 done. The only thing I had to say is that make, please make sure if you're watching this, subscribe to the Silicon Caribe channel. So when we pop something up new, you'll know what it is. Um, please do like, share, comment um, around that. this. If you're listening to it, listening to us right now, we're on Spotify. All everywhere that you um, listen to your podcast, please subscribe. Give us a five star rating if you found what we've what we're doing of value, and that's pretty much it, dude. Have a fantastic weekend. Same to you, man. And go out and get some sun. Uh, I am. I am actually. I I just have two more meetings, and then I'm going to my usual spot with my usual people to go have drinks. Um, and we're gonna make sure we sit down on the terrace. By, by, by the way, Ingrid, I I think I may have missed it, but I see your boy. Um, Usain is making some 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 investments again. He and Serena got into something, so I think that's we we'll talk about that next week. Well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not pleased to. But well, my, yeah. well, I did say a long time ago that he needs to be investing some more into into tech, into things that he enjoys, like. Well, um, well I know I know like the thing. We, we we talked about Caribbean tech and, and him investing in that. So I don't know if you had that conversation, but um. I want to get yeah. him on the show. Actually, that's what I want to get get him on the show. Let's see if I can use my sister. My sister is very very big in sports um olive mcnaughton and she has a sports travel agency and um so i will see if i can, and she knows him like like that so i'm gonna see if i can beg a favor like do a nepotistic thing i was like could you, um, could, you could you get us to could, we just need five minutes with you saying on on our on our pod so I, like, I think you'd love it yeah i think he'd love it too so um you know olive you saying yeah, we're just going to manifest you saying on This Week in Caribbean Tech. Anyway, that's it. Thank you guys for listening and watching to This Week in Caribbean Tech. As you know, it's our weekly podcast from Silicon Caribe, and it's all about keeping you guys ahead of what is happening in tech and business in the region around the world and why it matters to you and your business. So have a fantastic weekend, and we see you again next week.